Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at the Lenovo Smart Clock. This is a little Google Home device that will do all the basic assistance stuff that you might want in a form factor that might be more compatible with your nightstand. You've got a basic display here that gives you some basic information, and you can do a lot uh, with this device that you can do with other Google Home devices. We're going to step through some of those things in this review and also talk about some of the limitations that this device has in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this came in on loan from Lenovo. So we're done with this. It goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this little clock is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This is $79.99 as you see it, and it's very small. In fact, I was surprised by how tiny it was when I took it out of the box. About a year ago, I looked at some of the other Lenovo Google Home Assistant devices that are much larger, and the picture on this one kind of looked similar to those, but it is really tiny. It's got a four inch display. It's an IPS display that runs at 800 by 480. Not terribly high resolution, but for the things you'll do on this, you don't really need more than that. Uh, note though that it does not play back video. The hardware is capable of it, but they decided not to let you do it. So if you ask it to play a YouTube video, it will ask you to play it back on a Chromecast somewhere in your home. You can direct it to those Chromecast devices, but you can't watch the video on the screen. So just be aware of that. There's a couple of other things that it doesn't do uh, that other Google Home devices with displays do, and I'll show you a few examples of that as we work our way through. So if you don't yet have a Google Home device with a screen, uh, this one is very limited, and I think you will probably want to go with the larger devices that are out there that will offer more functionality. This is strictly a bedroom device. Uh, the display is a touch screen, and I'll show you some things you can do with that in a second. Uh, it does not allow you to install apps though, so whatever Google decides for, for you to use is what you're going to do with it, and that is it, uh, much like the other Google Home devices. Uh, you have a button up here on the top for making the volume louder or softer, the plus and minus here. Uh, you can also tap it when the alarm is going off to either snooze or turn off the alarm, and there is a way to toggle what the tap will do. Uh, and then you also have a USB port back here for charging your phone. You can just plug your phone charger in there and you can get some juice for that. Uh, and then you have a mute switch here for muting the microphone if you are uncomfortable with the device listening to you all the time. I am not sure if this is a hardware cut off or not. Uh, so just be advised, it may or may not actually uh, electrically disable the microphone, but it will mute itself when you put it in that position. Uh, there is no camera on this, uh, so you cannot uh, make video calls, and it won't let you do audio calls either, even though it has a microphone. So they're really trying to limit uh, what this does, and I'm guessing that's because people might be a little apprehensive about putting a listening device in their bedroom. Now, it bills itself as a clock first and foremost, and there are a number of clock faces that you can choose from. Uh, so right now, I've got this googly one here, but if I uh, pull up the bottom of the screen and click on the gear icon, I can go ahead and change my clock faces to something else. Uh, they've got this cool retro one and a few other modern looking things if you want to go with those, and I'm guessing over time they may add some additional ones to the mix. Uh, if I click on the edit button here, uh, I can also adjust the color of my retro display here, so you have a few options to personalize things. And they also have a dark and light option uh, that you might want to turn on because what this will do is have the display adjust based on the ambient light in the room. So you can see right now it's got a much brighter uh, display going right here. My camera doesn't like white light, so it's a little more intense than it otherwise would be. But then if we cover up the uh, light sensors here, it'll take a second, but it will normally detect, let me get my other, here we go, uh, detect that the light has reduced and it will not be this glowing thing that is always beckoning you it in the middle of the night. I also found that when it's in a completely dark room, uh, the display all but shuts off. You can see a little bit of the screen very much dimmed, uh, so it's not going to be something that will disturb you late at night. It does very smartly adjust the brightness of the screen depending on the ambient light. Now this is a Google Home device, so you will activate it with your normal trigger words. I will be muting out the trigger words as we go through the video here. So if you hear a break in the audio, it's because I don't want to set off other Google devices that you have in your home. And you can do some of the basics here, like say, what's the weather in New York City today? 
In New York City today, there will be thunderstorms with a forecasted high of 68 and a low of 66. So you'll get some Currently visual display here volume. of what it's uh, doing for you. And uh, the other thing that you can do when it does pull up the results here for weather, uh, once my volume thing goes away here, I can click on more on weather.com and it will pull up a very tiny little web page from the Weather Channel that I can scroll through to get more information on the weather. So it does have some of the uh, basics that you may have experienced on some of the other Google Home devices. Uh, the speaker is very loud. It carries across the room. And it doesn't sound bad for music and that sort of thing. It's not going to replace a larger device, but it's decent. And I think uh, you'll be pleased with how it sounds, whether you're listening to the Google talk to you or uh, listening to music. But it does fall short of the functionality we have seen on other Google Home devices with a screen. And here's an example of that. Show me a coffee shop in Hartford, Connecticut. I found a few coffee shop options. Story and Soil Coffee, Blue State Coffee, and Tizan Euro Asian Cafe. I've sent these to your phone. And so what you saw there was that it did answer the question, but we didn't get a visual representation of all the listings. And that's something if you have one of the larger Google Home devices with a display, uh, you will get a list of different locations. You'll see photos. You can scroll through all of those things. Uh, what we got here was essentially what you would get with the standard audio version of a Google Home device. So even though it has a screen, its functionality is very limited. I tried some recipes on it as well. On the regular Google Home devices, you get a step-by-step -step guide with large text. Here you don't get anything but the audio cues that you would get on a regular audio Google Home. But you can do things like home control on the device. So if we switch over to my two-up view here, I can say, hey, turn the color bulb on. You got it, turning the color bulb on. And I have some controls here so I can adjust the uh, brightness of the bulb, for example. This bulb doesn't step down all that noticeably here, but it is actually dimming as I'm doing this. And I can make it brighter, of course, as well. I can also change the color so I can say, hey, make it blue. Sure, changing the color bulb to blue. And because Google is pretty smart about context, it knows I was referring to that light bulb when I did that. And then, of course, I can just hit the switch here and turn it off. Now, like other Google Home devices, you manage this and a lot of your other stuff through the Google Home app. And it's getting a little busy these days and can be a little confusing. But once you kind of understand how it breaks out all of your devices, it'll make a little bit more sense. Uh, what I wanted to show you in this video are the routines. Uh, because this is something that might be very useful to have with a bedroom clock. So if we click on the routines here and I go over to manage routines at the bottom, I'm going to show you two that we're going to step through. Uh, the first one here is good morning. And what good morning is going to do is, first of all, turn on my light. You can see color bulb here says turn on. It will then tell me about the weather and then tell me about my commute and then it's going to play some news for me as I'm getting ready to start my day. Now I can adjust the order here. Maybe I want to hear about my commute before the weather uh, and I'll move that up like that and move it back this way and we'll hit save. And then what we're gonna do here is uh, tell the Google Home device good morning. So let me do that now. Good morning. Good afternoon, Lon Seidman. And you can see it turned the light on as instructed. PM. And we got the time. The commute to work is and it's giving me the commute. With light traffic if you take CT9N and I-91 North by car. And then after that, it's it will give me the weather. <laughs> Today, it'll be rainy with a forecasted high. And then if I skip that, uh, it would then go into playing me some news on NPR and some of the other news sources that I set up. So it's kind of a neat way just to get everything going all at once. And likewise, for bedtime, I could have it do something different. Uh, so for example, I could have it put my Google phones on silent. I could have it maybe turn off the bedroom light, but turn on the outside lights. I can have it lock the doors and arm the security system, and I can do all of that with a single command. Now, you also have access to music on the device, so you can listen to music, although you can't watch any music videos. And if you go over here to music, you can see the services that it currently supports. Uh, so, for example, if you are a Spotify subscriber, you can simply ask it to play a certain type of music, and it will default to Spotify if you have it selected there. Uh, likewise, YouTube Music and Google Play Music are supported along with Pandora and Deezer right now. Now, power consumption on this device is about 2 watts at idle. 
I didn't see much of a variation between the screen being dim and bright when it was in that idle mode. When it's doing something, I would see it creep up to about four watts or so, but it doesn't stay at four watts very long, so I don't think there's going to be a huge cost of ownership here. And overall, I kind of like it. It does have some functionality that goes beyond the basic Google Home devices. It works very well as a nightstand alarm clock. I was disappointed, though, that it's limited in its feature set, especially given that it can't play back video, even though the hardware inside of it is fully capable of doing so. So maybe they can rethink that or give you the option to toggle that on. It might be nice every once in a while to play a YouTube video or something, or maybe just listen to it. Uh, so that was the one thing that bothered me about it. I think if it was $59, I would be much more enthusiastic about it. $79 isn't bad, but I think a little bit on the high side given the limitations here. And if you are looking to see what these Google Home devices with screens can do, uh, check out my playlist down below so you can see some of the things that a larger device will give you that this one does not. But if you are heavily invested in the Google Assistant and Google Home infrastructure or ecosystem, I think this will certainly be a nice addition to it. It very easily configured itself on my network. All of the things that I'm doing with my other Google Home devices quickly became available here, and I think you'll have a good time with it. Just know that it's really designed for a bedroom and you don't get all of the features that you'll get on the larger ones that work in the kitchen and other places around the house. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Brian Parker, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.